Today I'm going to share my simple, minimal, done in one day laundry routine. You know those chores that seem to be never ending? As soon as you think you've finished, then another round comes along and you're right back to where you started. Well, laundry is definitely one of those tasks for me and I feel like for years I was trying to figure out a way to figure out how to make it less frustrating and more efficient. And over the last year or two, I believe I finally cracked the code on what works for me on how to make this mundane task more enjoyable and less stressful. And so today as I tackle the laundry, I'm going to bring you along and share with you the 10 tips that have helped me simplify the process. And the best part about all of it is that this is done in one day. That's right, just one day of laundry a week and you don't have to think about it for the rest of the week. Are you ready to learn how? Okay, let's get started. The first thing that I do each laundry day is to collect the laundry baskets. And this is where tip number one comes in. Keep your laundry hampers in the location where the laundry is being created. I have seen a lot of people who have the mindset of keeping the laundry hampers in the laundry room itself. And to me, it's just an opportunity for clothes to not get into the correct place. Because as we all know, kids, if they change their clothes in the bathroom, those clothes are gonna stay in the bathroom. They're not going to remember always to bring them to the laundry room. So for us, 95% of the time, our clothes are being changed in the bathroom. And so we keep our hampers right in the bathrooms. Upstairs, we have a hamper underneath the sink. In my husband and I's master bathroom, we keep a basket underneath the sink as well. And I shared about this a bit in our minimalist bathroom tour video. And downstairs, the bathroom is a little smaller and so we don't have space for a hamper in the room itself. And so right next door is the mechanical room and that is where we keep the downstairs laundry hamper. After I've gathered all the laundry into one place, I kind of take assessment of what's all there and try to determine how many loads of laundry I'll be doing that day. And generally it works out that we have about three loads of clothing laundry and one load of towels to be done each week for our family of seven. Next, I set the washing machine to large load and cold water. And that's tip number two, I almost always use cold water. And I can get by with this because of tip number three. We don't purchase clothing items that have specialty fabrics. All of the fabric that our clothing is made of can easily be washed together. And so it really cuts down on the hassle of switching the cycles and trying to figure out if something, looking at all the tags and figuring out if something goes in the cold wash or the warm wash or the hot wash, just everything gets washed on cold because all of the clothing is able to be washed on cold. Okay, tip number four may be a bit shocking, but hear me out. I do not sort clothes at all. I used to separate out the lights and the darks and the colors into separate piles, but it always seemed like one of the piles would be a little bit larger than the others and it ended up creating probably one or two more loads of laundry every single week. And so I did a test to try to determine if everything could be thrown together. And guess what? With the cold water, it didn't matter. Now, of course, if we purchase a new item that seems to have a lot of dye in it, then we will run it through a cycle kind of on its own to get those dyes out or maybe rinse it in the laundry tub sink just to make sure that all the dyes are out. But generally speaking, on a week to week basis, we do not sort our laundry at all. Once the first load has made it through the washing machine, then it is time for the dryer. Yes, I do keep a laundry basket in my dryer, but it's a convenient spot to keep it. So that's where it is. I know that many people like drying racks and it's better for the environment, but I did try it for a while and I just was always kind of annoyed by the visual clutter of all of the items hanging around and it seemed like it took, well it did take a lot longer to get things dried. And with this system, I just liked it all to be done in one day and that just wasn't possible with drying racks. And so I used the dryer and for many years I did use dryer sheets to try to eliminate the static cling. But recently my mom gifted me a set of dryer balls, of wool dryer balls, and I have to say I am completely in love. These little dryer balls, really do speed up the process of drying, so I am overall using less electricity than I was before. 
And I would say per load of laundry, these dryer balls get the clothes through the dryer about 20 minutes faster than just using a dryer sheet. So that's a win-win for me. Okay, tip number six is important, so listen closely. As soon as the clothes are done in the dryer, take them out and lay them flat. And at this point, I usually like to do a rough sorting as well. I will separate them in terms of tops and bottoms. So they have two piles, and then I have a basket of socks and underwear and miscellaneous items. And this is very important because if you don't do this step, you will end up with a lot of wrinkles. And I don't know about you, but I don't enjoy or want to take the time to do any ironing, and you probably don't either. So this step is important, do not skip it. Now at this point you may be wondering, how do we get by with only having three loads of clothing laundry per week for a family of seven? And I would attribute that to a couple different reasons. Number one, our clothing wardrobes are minimal, and as you can imagine, as a minimalist family, we just don't have a lot of clothing and that is part of why we have less to manage on laundry day. And number two, and this one might be controversial, we do reuse items that aren't dirty. So for example, hear me out on this because this might be, like I said, might be controversial, but if my husband, for example, wears a sweater to church for an hour and he manages not to spill on himself with anything, that sweater can easily just go right back in his closet. There's no need to wash it right away. And I think that that's one thing that a lot of families might do is they just, as soon as you've worn it once, you need to wash it right away. And we'll also do this, like for example, if our kids have an undershirt or if we have an undershirt and a sweatshirt on top of it, maybe the sweatshirt gets dirty, you spill something on it, but the undershirt is probably still clean. And so they could wear that two days in a row if everything was still clean and that would eliminate one shirt from the laundry over the course of those two days. So that is another way that we cut down on our laundry. And that may gross some of you out, I'm not sure, but I promise you we are not filthy people. We know when our clothing is dirty or not and we just take assessment of it at that time and decide does this go in the laundry basket or can I wear it again. Once all of the clothing items have gone through the wash cycle and the dry cycle, it's time for my favorite part of the laundry day routine. And that is I bring my laptop into my bedroom where my clothes are laying flat, ready to be folded, and I watch a show. And I'm kind of a sucker for like a mystery show on either like Dateline 2020 or A&E. And I think it sort of tricks my brain into going to another place and trying to solve this problem. And it gets me away from thinking about the mundane task of actually folding the clothing. And a lot of times I'll actually finish clothing before the show is over. And I think that's because I actually speed up the process just as I'm going. I'm not even thinking about how much work it's taking me. I'm just doing the folding and watching the show. And it actually is quite enjoyable. And while I'm folding the laundry, the last load, which is the towel load, is now in the dryer. And that usually works out so that when I'm finished folding, that drying cycle is done and I'm ready to put everything back in its place. And this is tip number 10. Get it all put away on the same day. Because even if you have it folded and it's sitting in a basket, it becomes like a secondary closet. You know that your kids are gonna get in there and try to find their favorite shirt or pair of pants and everything is gonna get rustled up and make a complete mess once again. So please don't skip this step. Make sure to get everything back in its place, out of sight, out of mind, and you don't have to think about it again for another week. The laundry's all done and it feels great. I hope that you enjoyed watching today's video and maybe some of these tips, you'll give it a try at your own home. Maybe you won't adopt all of them, but just try one or two. Let me know in the comments if you do try one of these tips and it helps to simplify your laundry process. Please consider sticking around to learn more tips and tricks on how to live a simple and minimal lifestyle by subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification bell so that you'll always know when more content is available. Thank you for watching today's video and I hope you'll stop by the cottage again really soon.